This week, the Deputy Health Minister, Dr. Sibongi Seni Dlomo, together with Gauteng MEC for Health, Nomatemba Mocheti, will lead a march against illegal and unsafe termination of pregnancy. They are doing this to raise awareness among young women and youth in general about access to health care services, especially sexual reproductive health care services, including contraception. The Deputy Health Minister joins me now. Welcome, um, Dr. Dlomo, and thank you for your time. Tell us a little bit more about the event. Uh, good morning. Uh, good evening to you and to your viewers. Uh, this is just a continuation of uh, the national tale that we are dealing on these processes. We started in the northwest, moved on to Eastern Cape, Limpopo. Now, just three days ago, two days ago, we were in Free State, and we will also be highlighting this in the in Gauteng Eguru Learning next week. The objective is to leave behind with the MECs this program that they could lead to assist to improve sexual reproductive health, especially amongst them, the 15 to 20 year old adolescent girls and young women. We also are mindful that some of them are avoiding to use our health services because of a recorded poor attitude of our staff. So we talk about that to say how much of the people not accessing our service, especially the young ones due to our attitude, can we then improve our attitude on that? But we also go on to say to them, we are providing in some facilities already safe environment through what we're creating as youth zones, where there's at least one nurse trained to be friendly, not judgmental, supportive to the young people, where they give you enough information on sexual and reproductive health. So when we actually do these uh, campaigns, we go onto the streets and we hope that mayors will be joining us because there's what we call a street furniture. Most of our towns have got these posters, quick abortion, safe abortion, Dr. Lerato, Dr. Mama, whatever those funny things. Those things are illegal. And therefore, the municipalities must be aware that those adverts, when we take them down, people are saying, but why are you taking these things down? We thought these things were legal because municipalities are not doing anything about them. And we take those posters down and then we throw them away. And we say there is no one, and people are saying, we go there, Dr. Adamo. it's expensive, and it is free to terminate a pregnancy in your facilities, but we just are very unhappy about the attitude that we sometimes receive, and we don't think sometimes some of your people will keep the information very confidential. So some of these things are really out of our own making. We'll try and improve on that, but however, we are requesting our members, our members of the society, please try us, don't go to those um, illegal abortionists, because a lot of them, people come back there dead, and they come into our hospitals seeking help, and we are not able to assist them, and they do die. Very young girls, and they do die. So we would want police to arrest, because there's nobody who's legally allowed to terminate a pregnancy except a nurse or a doctor. And so all those um, illegal abortion posters in the community are illegal, and we take them down and request police to assist us to arrest. Well, what can be done? I want to touch on that point before we move on to the access issue. What can be done about illegal abortion prosecutions? Uh, what can you tell us about your success as a department in driving out these criminal so-called practitioners? These are very rich criminals. They actually lull uh, poor young boys to take, take these posters, plug them into the streets, and then... Uh, when we arrest these young boys, they tell us, no, it was in that red, in that house, in that yellow building where I was actually given this and some money to go and distribute. Some of the people have been arrested in some parts of the town, in some parts of the country, we find at that time committing these uh, uh, atrocious acts on and, and, and unsuspecting women, and therefore we have been able to arrest. Uh, but we will want the society to really be very cautious of this and help us to say if they do know. In some areas we have actually arrested, not because we caught people on the streets, but because people in the society are already aware that in that corner and that of that street, there is a house there. This is where they are doing these things. So we do arrest, and therefore we request that prosecutions be successful because no one, myself being a doctor, I'm not allowed to do termination of pregnancy right. at the street corner, at the street corner, not in the right private space that is conducive for that uh, to be done. I need to do it in a clinic or a hospital, not in a back street or some funny house in town. So, so what services uh, exactly, um, uh, Dr. Dlomo, 
are available and how accessible are they to women? I ask this with the words of experts like Dr. Daphne Kronko in my mind. She's at the Wits Public School of Health. And she says a lot of people still don't know where to get access to safe termination. So women are sent from pillar to post until it's too late. Look, all our hospitals, district, tertiary, tertiary and quaternary services, they should be able to do that. Not all our clinics are able to terminate pregnancies, uh, but there should not be any uh, South African uh, citizen who should be denied to have these uh, this, uh, services. And if they do, they should be properly referred on time, not to say we don't know, we are not sure where to do it. So if they can't do it in my local clinic, then someone should be able to refer on time. We are. This has been in, in, in the government for the from since 1990, I think 1995, that. Uh, where we can actually allow a, a safe termination of pregnancy in our facilities. So nobody should be denied these services because some of these uh, uh, clients are out of rape and some of them is just that I, it was just a mistake. I have already got nine children. I don't want this child. Please assist me to terminate. And some of them are not yet planned. These are young South Africans who probably has had a misfortune. So they really don't want to have a pregnancy at that time. And we should be really available to assist them. So basically the message you're sending is, you know, we accept that nurses, uh, you know, have been a, a big reason why there's a lack of trust between services available and potential clients in the public sector. We're trying to work on that, but you can go into, um, you know, you can go into one of our facilities. And are these all attached to the uh, public, so the primary health care facilities that women can go into, that they can go into any of these facilities and get the assistance when it comes to, uh, uh, you know, a good and, 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 and legal termination of pregnancy? Absolutely, you got it right to say, let us also improve our attitudes because some of the reasons are point us to us, but let us also, while we're doing that, to say, try us, go to our facilities. When you really have a pressure, you'll be surprised. Some of these women are cancelled and they say, oh, I did not know that I can continue this pregnancy till term and therefore give my child up for adoption because I'm not ready. So they also go through that because when they come to our facilities, we offer them even that service. But we are right right now, all our healthcare facilities, especially district hospitals, uh, tertiary and quaternary hospitals, will be able to offer this. Some of our clinics may not be able to offer because you need to go to theatre and get to be cleaned properly and to be discharged the next day. All right. Thank you so much for that update. Um, Deputy Health Minister Dr. Sibongi Seni Dlomo just uh, talking to us about this march that's coming up uh, uh, in the week ahead, but also that these services are available to women. Go in and, and use them so that you can get adequate and safe health care.